Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project Magnetic Reversal News and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum update Friday, April 8th, 9 p.m. Mountain Time, 2022. The models are in, and it's going to be a sand heavy snow, a nor'easter at the end of April. And that's the big story. January type snowstorm to hit Snoqualmie in Stevens Pass. Keep calm. It's boom time. Snow is in the forecast in the in a major way, a major storm will be passing through higher elevations of north central Washington this weekend. And it's boom time, kids. Will Portland remember this 77 degree Thursday if it's snowing by Sunday? Keep calm. I doubt it. <laughs> Breaking Mount Baker reported 50 inch inches over the last several days. And Feet of snowfall on ski resorts, and they're considering more hours of operation. Can you believe it? Well, blizzard conditions are possible as a potentially significant storm approaches Colorado and will move to the upper Midwest. Now, Michigan might hit 70 degrees also next week, but there's a catch. It's going to be followed by snow, and that's a ho, ho, ho. Shut up, Al. Get in your hole. This guy. He can't even figure out how it could snow in April down in, well, look at that. Georgia, potentially. South Carolina. Who knows? But the Southern Mountains are certainly going to see some activity of significant value here at the end of April. Will there be a full nor'easter that covers South Jersey as we enter May? Well, that will certainly be a wake-up call for the global warmest around the world. And, well, we are certainly praying for it. Let's just break down the snow totals for the next few days. Here's your Saturday forecast, and there'll be some snow in the Southern Mountains, and that's going to be raising some eyebrows in Tennessee all the way up through West Virginia there into Pennsylvania. Some snow in the mountains of the Appalachians as snow moves into the West, and that's that heavy snow we just talked about in uh, Washington State, and it's going to be moving down into Oregon over the next few days. Day after day, more and more snow. Look at the snow develop in this region. 50 inches. Some areas showing more than four feet of snow. Now, this is going to move into, down the spine um, of the Sierras, which is good news. This is a region that is very drought-stricken, but it's, the south is going to be kept, well, quite devoid of precipitation. We're going to get snow in all the Rockies, and then this system is quite interesting right here. April 18th, Monday, Tuesday, and that could be, well, record-breaking, if anything. Now, let's move over to the European models. Many people are claiming that, well, Europe has just been left out in the cold. So let's parse these up, and let's take a look at some of the snow totals in Europe. And there's going to be a storm that hits the Alps in just the next few days, and that's going to be followed up in the later models here by some epic snow totals, potentially, Again, the same thing happening in the European models. It's happening in the North American models. And, well, Grand Solar Minimum much? Big snowstorm barrels into the Alps. Central and Eastern Europe's exceptionally cold March, plus Vancouver to see rare April snow. Ho, ho, ho. Phew. Holy macaroni. Now, that's a lot of snow uh, going on for mid-April, and we've been doing this for quite some time. Seismic update. No quakes of note, and that's good news worldwide. Almost nothing happening of significance, and that's a good thing. Worldwide Volcano News Update. We've got Campe Felegre Volcano in Italy. Uh, well, scaring the sh out of tons of people. Now, the seawater turns red and worries about a possible connection with volcanic activity. The only problem is that this is algae, which has no connection to volcanic activity. Now, after the water in the Averno Crater Lake turned red last week because of an unusually strong algal bloom, stretches of the sea in the Gulf of Pozzuoli also turned red recently, presumably from the same phenomenon. Such algal blooms of the Averno Lake usually happen in winter. Well, it's just the end of winter, so it's pretty much winter, when the deep water is warmer than the surface and rises along with algae that can multiply explosively. However, this year's algal bloom, especially its extension into the adjacent open sea, seems to be much stronger than what residents can recollect from recent memory. And many are worried whether there's a connection with the increased seismic and degassing activity of the caldera. Well, they read the Bible and the red tide, and, and they think this is a sign. Only 
well, there's very little activity going beneath, going on beneath the caldera. Just some normal background stuff. So when anything else changes other than some normal background activity, there could be some small outgassing events. This is not indicative of a major eruption that would be a calderic eruption of any fashion. This would be a small puff, puff, or a pass if anything's happening there. So good news at Campe Fadegne. People are losing their mind for no reason. Now, Poas, volcano in Costa Rica. Sudden explosive eruption yesterday morning came without a warning. Well, that would mean it was a sudden explosive eruption, wouldn't it? So you don't have to use the rest of the sentence. Anyway, I do digress. An eruption occurred yesterday, 7th of April, on the morning at 2.42 a.m. local time from the volcano's greater north area. And the event lasted three minutes, generated a steam plume that barely rose off the surface of the earth. No one cares, and it really doesn't matter. But there was apparently no warning for the eruption, which came without a detectable precursor. And anyone camping down there, well, holy macaroni, they got a wake-up call. Now, say a Jorge, a lot of people fear-mongering about this. We were the first to report on it weeks ago, and people just got, got caught up. They don't actually look at the data on YouTube. They don't care. They just look at some headlines, and then they try to scare you. We've been showing you the data, and there's no evidence of an imminent any eruption or anything here. In fact, the seismicity is so low, it's almost embarrassing. So there's that. Stop watching Dabu 0007. Now, avian flu is forcing farmers to kill millions of hens, and egg prices could soar. Well, we reported on this too. Uh, over a week ago. And we, of course, 20% of, you kill all 20% of all laying hens in the U.S. Well, prices are definitely going to go up 20%. But let's talk about some of the other fruits and vegetables that you're buying in the store. Now we're talking about the Dirty Dozen. And the new list of fruits and vegetables packed with the most pesticides are out. And the 2020 Dirty Dozen list is in. Now we've been reporting on this <clears throat> for over a decade, as we helped start the March Against Monsanto, the first global protest against Monsanto back in 2011, and I helped organize the Philadelphia excerpt of that. Now, the Dirty Dozen for 2022 includes strawberries at the top of the list, the most pesticides, up to 30 pesticides found on any strawberry at any given time. Spinach as well, kale, collards, and mustards, and nectarines, apples, and grapes, all the most disgusting top six fruits and vegetables for 2022. Now, if you're looking for the clean 15, the number one clean vegetable or fruit for 2022 is avocados. Less than two pesticides found on avocados, sweet corn, pineapple, onions, and papaya. So if you're looking to buy some new non-nutritional food that looks like food from the supermarket, I would stick with the clean 15. Avocado, sweet corn, pineapples, onions, papaya, sweet peas, asparagus, honeydew, kiwi, cabbage, mushrooms, cantaloupe, mangoes, watermelon, and sweet potatoes. And stay away from the dirty dozen. Tomatoes, celery, pears, peaches, cherries, bell peppers, grapes, apples, nectarines, kale, collard, mustards, any green, spinach, and strawberries. Now, this is if you're not buying organic. This is if you're buying conventional. But if, even if you're buying organic, the food is less nutrient-dense and covered in pesticides, just organic ones. So there's no difference, which is why we implore everyone to start growing their own food to avoid avian bird flu and other disgusting things. Because scientists are now developing plants that can de deliver the same vaccine technology used by Pfizer and Moderna in their COVID shots by being eaten. Okay, it, this is a decade after the March Against Monsanto when we were warning you about genetically modified crops that are smothered in pesticide. Now scientists are developing plants that can deliver the same vaccine technology used by Pfizer and Moderna shots by being eaten. I know, Al. Al's scared. No. <laughs> if you want to know more, you got to tune into Rumble because that's about all we can say about this here. I know, it's kind of queer. Now, estimates of the carbon cycle. Now, the IPCC has been touting that they are the top 
scientific collective on the topic of climate change, carbon sequestration, and on and on. And that we have to reach a certain carbon limit or the whole world is going to burn up. Now, the only problem is that new research coming out from Virginia Tech shows that the IPCC, NASA, NOAA, and all other fear mongers in the climate change religion are full of shite. Yeah. Estimates of the carbon cycle vital to predicting climate change are completely incorrect. Now, they have a caveat here because they want to keep their funding. The findings do not counter the established science that we're all burning up, but highlight how the accounting of the amount of carbon withdrawn by plants and returned to soil is completely fucking inaccurate. Hello! Which means that they're full of shit. And I could just point it out to you here. Here we're going all the way back to 1895. The red line you're looking at is the temperature of Earth. That's red from 1895 to 2011. Now, the black dots are the increase in carbon dioxide that are all killing us and we're all burning up. And you can see here that about in 1950, something happened. And in 1957, it started rapidly rising. Well, at the same time, the temperature on Earth rapidly dropped. While CO2 was rapidly rising, the temperature dropped into the Ice Age scare of the 1970s. All of climate science is a complete fraud, and it's exposed right here on this graph because there is no connection between the increase in carbon dioxide in the near term and the temperature. Zero connection. Period. Whew. Glad I got that off my chest. Now, a few of you, after we posted this on Magnetic Reversal News, or I don't know where we proved put this graph, but the global geomagnetic field of the past 100,000 years, in case you were wondering, it's where this graph comes from, which shows you the ex mass extinction of Neanderthals 41,000 years ago, mass extinction during the Younger Dryas here at 13,000 years ago, and the mass extinction we're now li living now. Now. Now the red line is the dipole moment the strength of the dipole on Earth, where it dropped almost to zero here during the extinction of the Neanderthals. And then the dipole moment doesn't go anywhere near zero, but drops the lowest since that time in the most abrupt way during the Younger Dryas. The modern event is almost equivalent to the Younger Dryas event. So it's very telling. Magnetic excursions call, cause mass extinctions. And we're living one. And when they occur, plasma petroglyphs form in the sky. These are warning signs from the ancients, the natives, which is why we're having Squatterman 2022, to show you these warnings in the field and then to discuss them later at the conference. I hope you can join us in the desert in Rio Doso, New Mexico, May 14th, for the field trips and May 15th for the conference. It will be a once-in-a-lifetime event. Undescribable. This petroglyph, very few people on Earth have ever seen. And it depicts a hominid with some type of uniform on, riding a ram with a wheel on his back end. Is this the first plow? That's a boom to knowledge. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. In a dystopian world, we hope to bring you the most current facts, the most current data, and the best insight. Subscribe to the Oppenheimer Ranch Project for more. Share this with like-minded people and be safe. And we'll see you in Rui Doso on May 14th and 15th at Squatterman 2022. That's a boom to knowledge. Be safe. We love you. Oh, this is an amazing promo.